Wasn't that worth getting out of bed and coming to church? Amen. Thank the Lord for that. Take your Bibles, please, and turn with me to Proverbs chapter 18. And in just a moment, we'll look at one verse, verse 10. Proverbs 18, verse 10. How many of you have raised teenagers? Raise your hand. All right. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine into you. I'm not, I'm not kidding. <laughs> when our children were young, I had a hard time not worrying about them. I had a hard time not being afraid. In recent years, recent months, I should say, I've been feeling that same apprehension coming on me toward my grandchildren. The kind of world in which we live. And I know that the world has never been perfect. I get it. But I did not grow up in a world of same-sex marriage. I did not grow up until I was in high school where abortion was finally legalized in 1973 when I was a junior in high school. And things have happened. Things are happening so rapidly. And you wonder where it's going to be 40 years from now. But I'm praying for the next 40 years, literally for the next 40 years, that God is going to move in a powerful way and that we are going to see the Lord do great and mighty things in this nation. I hope that you'll join me in that prayer. But I, I can remember back when my kids were little and we were living in Alabama. Bethany had been born just a year or two before this happened. And I was downstairs. We had our bedroom downstairs in the basement part. Everybody in Alabama has a basement. I miss basements. But uh, I was down there and I had a little study off of it and I was praying. And I said, Lord, I can't. I know that fear is a sin. I can't seem to get hold of this in my heart. I don't know what to do. And, and how many of you know that when you cry out to God, he answers? Does anybody know that? I'm telling you. As clear as I could see or hear anything, I felt like the Lord said, I want you to do something. And here's what I feel like he told me to do. The stairs led up to the main level of the house. I was at the bottom of the stairs. And I, I don't know if I can even tell this, okay? But it's like I could see myself picking up Grant, my oldest. And I took him to the top of those stairs and I handed him to Jesus. I literally walked up the stairs and I, in my mind's eye, handed him to Jesus. And I said, Lord, he's yours. I went back down, got Lindsay, <laughs> walked up those stairs, and I gave the Lord my little daughter, Lindsay. Walked back down those stairs, took Allison, walked up the stairs. <laughs> Gave Allison to Jesus. Walked back down, got a little bit bet. Picked her up and took her to the top of the stairs and said, Lord, I give you my family. I give you my children. I know that unless you protect us, we have no protection. And I don't know how to tell you, but something rolled off of me. I read those verses, cast your cares upon the Lord. Cast your burdens upon the Lord. How many of you know the verses I'm talking about? You've read those verses too, right? Now, why do bad things happen to people? Even people like Job that prayed. Why do people like that go through the turmoil that they went through? I don't know. But I believe this, I believe that as parents and grandparents and just Christians, 
that we ought to pray for the protection of the Lord. And one of the verses that has been a stalwart in my life is the one I want to read with you today. Would you read it with me, please? Could you put it on all the screens so that we'll be reading from the same translation? Because I know we got 55 translations in here, all right? Everybody reads a different version. But let's read Proverbs 18, verse 10, and talk about the protection of the Lord. Read it with me, please. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runs into it and is safe. Let's read it again. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runs into it and is safe. Father, in these moments, would you just teach us about your protection in Jesus' name? And if you agree, say amen. First of all, the authority of your protection. The authority that you have is the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Authority is different than power. Authority exercises power, but it's not the same as power. If you take a man and he goes out on Appling Road and he's in blue jeans and a t-shirt and tries to stop traffic, how many of you know that there's some folks in Memphis that may not stop? Amen. <laughs> but you put a police uniform on there, put a gun on his hip and chains on the other side. You let him walk out there, that big old badge representing the police of Memphis. And thank God for our police men and women. Amen. Thank God for them. They do a whole lot and don't get paid very much. They're like teachers. Thank God for all of them. But you let that guy go out there with that big blue uniform on, that hat and that badge, and you, you let him do this, and I'm telling you, they'll back up all the way back over to Highway 64. Amen. What is that? Power? No. The guy that walked out there had no power. He can't, you can't physically stop a running car. You'll get killed. He didn't even have authority. And the guy that walked out there in the uniform didn't have the power. Yeah, he had the gun. But he, listen, they could still run over him. But he had the authority. What is the authority? He represented a higher power and a higher authority. And the people seeing that badge recognized, if I don't stop, he may not give me a problem, but he's going to connect me with the people who will give me the problem. There's a higher power here. There's a higher authority here. How many of you understand now what authority is? Amen. Look at me. When you got saved, you became a deputy for Jesus Christ. God deputized you. He authorized you with the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. You say, what's a strong tower? Look on your bulletin, and you'll see a strong tower. People used to run to these towers. When the enemy was coming, they'd run to the tower. If I can just get to the tower, if I can just get on the other side of the wall, there's safety. I have protection in that tower. I have protection in that wall. Listen to me. The only protection, real protection that you and I have is the Lord Jesus Christ. He's not just the one that provides the wall. He is the wall. He's not just the one who provides the strong tower. He is the strong tower. Now let me preach a little bit. The authority of your protection. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Say that with me. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. There's power in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's protection in the name of of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord God, Jehovah God, is king over all kings, ruler over all rulers, authority over all authorities in this earth and in the heavens itself. No devil, no demon can stand before the Lord. When the Lord's people cry out to Him in prayer, in the name and the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, the devil and every demon has to bow, submit, and surrender. David said, if I need a shelter from my enemies, the only shelter I have is that tower, that strong tower to which I run all the time. Some of y'all think David said that when I was going up against Goliath, it was just me. No, I was in the tower. 
Some of y'all think that when I was out on the battlefields against the Philistines, you thought it was just me. No, no, it was my God. He was my strong tower. And I was in Him, and I was safe. I realized that nothing could happen to me if I was in the will of God until the God who has the will of God was ready for me to, to go home. Isn't that a great thought? That nothing can happen. If you're walking with God, He is your strong tower, and nothing can happen to you unless it slips through the sovereign hands of God. And sometimes God allows bad things to happen to good people, and I don't understand it. I don't understand why in the 12th chapter of Acts. I've never understood this. I've preached through Acts two or three times. I've read Acts I don't know how many times. I don't understand it when I get to the point where James is beheaded and Peter is imprisoned and Peter, the angels come and get him out, but James was killed. Why was James? You know what? The secret things belong to the Lord. I can't understand all that stuff. I don't know everything. All I know is God knows what's best, and God is sovereign, and God doesn't cause everything that happens, but God takes everything that happens, and He uses it to perform His will. You say, that's a cop-out. No, it's not. It's Bible. And I'm telling you all over the Bible, the name of the Lord is our strong tower. You have authority in the name of Jesus that you don't have authority in any other name. When I was a college student, George Guthrie and I started a little band called Living Water, and we started traveling, and we'd go anywhere anybody would ask us. We'd pay our way. Back then, there was a whole lot more love than offering, amen? I'm just telling you, man, man we'd go anywhere. <laughs> we'd go to jails. We'd go to schools, and we, we got to the point where a lot of places we went didn't have good sound systems. We said, we need a sound system. And we found one in Blyville, Arkansas, two college boys, junior, I was a junior, he was a freshman. And it cost $2,000. You might as well have said $2 million. We didn't have any money, not much. And so I go, I, I'm working for my mom at the janitorial service, and we go down to First Citizens Bank, and I've been cleaning that bank now for about four years at that time, and I cleaned the same desk every night, and one of them was the vice president, Katie Winchester, and I knew her. And I said, Miss Katie, I need $2,000. She looked at me and she said a word I've never heard before in my life. What, is, what do you have for collateral? I said, what is that? She said, what, what, what do you, how will you guarantee that you're going to pay the loan? I said, Miss Katie, you know me. What are you talking about? My mother and daddy would kill me if I didn't pay the loan back. I said, I guess my life is collateral. I don't know. She said, well, this is not my money, Steve. She said, it's not like I just got a stash over here and I just handed it to somebody I like. She said, you got to have collateral. I said, well, I ain't got any collateral, but I need that money. Are you going to give it to me? She said, I can't do it. I started saying, well, I'm not going to clean very good around your desk anymore. I, guess. <laughs> I may not even dump your garbage tonight, amen. <laughs> no, I didn't get too much in the flesh, but I did get down. How many of you ever wanted to do something for God and it not work out the way you thought it would work out? So I start walking off, and here's what she said. She said, Steve, turn around. I said, yes, ma'am. She said, your mom and dad have money in the bank. I won't say, what good does that do me? My dad's tight as the bark on a tree. I'm not going to get any of that money. <laughs> Amen. That, that money is in a, that's in a hole. I'll never get that money. And here's what she said. She said, if he will co-sign the loan for you, if Miss Dorothy or Miss Ed, Mr. Edgar will co-sign the loan, you can, if they'll put their name on it, you can get it. And I went to my daddy and mother, and they said, yeah, we'll do it. But you know you're going to pay it back. I said, I get it. I understand. <laughs> and I found out that I, what I could not get in my name, I could get in my parents' name. That was a great lesson for me. Because now I know every day when I wake up and I cry out to my God, I have no collateral in heaven. Oh, but you're the pastor of Bellevue Baptist. That doesn't give you any collateral in heaven. Oh, but you've been the president of Southern Baptist. That doesn't give you any collateral in heaven. Do you know what my collateral in heaven is? The Lord Jesus Christ. 
And I can get through his name what I can't get through anybody else's name. Amen? Amen. I've cried more in front of y'all today. I have in a long time. You know what? That's okay. It's all right. And this is how it works in the spirit realm. Look at me. The devil is not impressed by your name or my name. Have you ever heard anybody say, in the name of Clinton, in the name of Bush, in the name of Obama, and I'm being respectful, in the name of Trump, come out, you demon. You know what? Demons will laugh if you try that. In the name of Gaines, in the name of Rogers, in the name of Bailey Smith or whoever, and the demons say, ha! But you rear back and say, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command you. And then every demon in hell will tremble and bow his head and say, I'm coming out. It's not your name. It's not my name. May my name perish once I die. I couldn't care less about my name. You know what? Nothing to it. But I know a name that's above every name. I know the authority above every authority. I know, listen, you're talking about the Supreme Court. There's really only one person sitting on the Supreme Court. Everybody on our little Supreme Court of the United States is going to answer to that Supreme Court. His name is Jesus Christ. His name is not Buddha. His name is not Muhammad. His name is not anything like that. His name is Jesus Christ. And we're going to stand before him. And he is our judge. And he is our authority. He's our authority. Bible says in Psalm 18, verse 2, The Lord is my rock and my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Psalm 20, verse 1, May the Lord, this is Solomon's daddy talking about now. This is David doing all this. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob set you securely on high. Psalm 61, verse 3, For you have been a refuge for me, O God, a tower of strength against the enemy. Psalm 71, verse 3, Be to me a rock of habitation to which I may continually come. You've given commandment to save me, for you are my rock, Lord, and my fortress. Psalm 144, verses 1 and 2, Blessed be the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands for war, my fingers for battle, my loving kindness, my fortress, my stronghold, my deliverer, my shield, he in whom I take refuge, you subdue my people under me. Isaiah 25, verse 4, but you, Lord, are a tower of refuge to the poor, O Lord, a tower of refuge to the needy in distress. You're a refuge from the storm. You're a shelter from the heat. The name of the Lord is a strong tower today, folks. I want to tell you, our God is still mighty. He's mighty to protect His children. You've got an authority. You need to start using it. I remember one time I was out hunting with a guy. He had a loaded 12-gun shotgun in his hand. And a snake. So this guy came by on a four-wheeler, ran over a snake, and the snake came up and started going toward him. He said, hey, he's holding a loaded shotgun. He said, snake, snake. I said, shoot him. You have a gun in your hand. He goes, oh, oh, yeah, bam. <laughs> Walking through life, somebody says, I don't like that you're a Christian. Oh, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? You got the name of Jesus. Say, so you know what? Let me, tell you, let me tell you why I do what I do. Jesus changed my life. You're not rebuking that guy. You're just saying, let me, let me tell you why I'm as messed up as I am. Jesus wrecked me about 42 years ago. <laughs> he just ran over me and killed me, and a new man rose up. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm having more fun preaching than anybody ought to have today. Amen. Aren't you grateful for the authority of our protection? Amen. All right, now number two, the appropriation of your protection. It's okay to have authority, but if you don't appropriate it, what does it matter? It's okay. It's kind of like that gun. Yeah, I got a gun. Well, there's a snake. Why don't you appropriate it? Shoot the snake. Appropriate the power of God. How do you do that? Through prayer. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runs into it. What's happening here? Do you see the picture? 
this righteous man is being attacked. Some of y'all think if I just live for Jesus, everybody will leave me alone. Ha! Huh? What are you talking about? When you accept Jesus, you're, you've picked a fight with the devil. What are you talking about? People harassed Jesus. You don't think they're going to harass you for following him? What are you talking about? Oh, if I'll just love Jesus more, nobody will have a problem with me. <laughs> You've lost your mind. You've got to run into this tower. And what is that? That's appropriating the name. Solomon said, if you righteous ones want to experience God's protection, you want him to be your high tower, you have to pray. You can't just stand around, do nothing, expect to be protected. They had to reach out and pray for protection. They had to run. They're running from their enemy to their high tower who will protect you from the enemy. Solomon said, Lord, you're my refuge. You're my safe place. Your name is my strong tower. So when I need protection, Solomon said, Lord, instead of living in fear, instead of living in doubt, that's what I was doing before I walked up those stairs and gave my little babies to Jesus. I was living in fear. And look at me, fear is not just bad. Fear is sin. It is the opposite of faith. It's one thing to be afraid and then go to Jesus and say, Lord, forgive me and help me now to trust in you and protect me. That's one thing. But to keep living in it is wrong. And don't say, well, I just have a phobia. No, no, wait a minute. Don't, don't, don't go there. I'm telling you that God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. The devil has two primary fangs. Do you know what they are? Fear and discouragement. And you watch how many times in the Bible those two words are mentioned together. And he will strike you. How many of you have ever just been walking along, man, you're walking with God, and all of a sudden you're just captivated by fear? Look at me. Anybody out there like that? I mean, it just hits you like, a, like a, just a, a train. It's just unbelievable. What is that? That's an attack from the enemy. What do I do? You appropriate you appropriate the protection of God. The name of the Lord is a strong terror. You run to the name of Jesus. When our kids were little, they'd wake up in the middle of the night crying. What's wrong? Well, I, I was scared. I was scared. I remember one time Allie was running through the house. Allie never walked anywhere. She ran everywhere. And Donna was at home, and she slammed her toe. She was barefoot. She never wore shoes. It could be five degrees, and she didn't wear shoes. And she ran through, and she slammed her toe into some desk or something, and she was rolling on the floor, two or two, three years old, just writhing. Oh, oh, I broke my toe. I broke my toe. <laughs> Donna said, what happened? I broke my toe. Which one? She said, the one that had roast beef. <laughs> True story. You can be going along and just stump your toe, the one that had roast beef. But I got news for you. You can run to the Lord, and He will be your protection. Every morning I start my day. <laughs> my wife came in there this morning. I always tell her, don't sneak up on me. Because I'm jumpy. I don't, I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not responsible for you if you sneak up on me, all right, what I do. You know that I love you and I would never hit you, but I'm telling you, don't sneak up on me, all right. But I had my hands lifted up. I was in deep praise. I'm not trying to impress you. I got no reason to try to impress you. But I was appropriating the names of God. I was saying, Lord, I thank you today that you're Jehovah. I got them written down here because I don't want to miss one of them. You're Jehovah Sidkenu. You're my righteousness. I don't have any, Lord. If I don't have your righteousness, I'm going to go to hell, dear God. But I am resting in the righteousness of Jesus today. How can you not lift your hands and say that? 
Lord, I thank you that you are Jehovah Makadesh. You're the one that sanctified me. You're the one that set me apart from all the people to be yours. And you're the one, if, if I have any holiness whatsoever, it comes from your holy life. Lord, you're Jehovah Nisi. You're the Lord my protection. You're the Lord who fights for me while I keep silent. God, if you don't fight for me, I got no chance I'm going to be wiped out. God, I praise you that you're Jehovah Jireh. You're my provider. You're my source. Lord, with all due respect, don't get mad at me. I thank God for how you, you take care of me and my family. But look at me. You're not my source. He is my source. You're a resource. But I praise my source for being my provider. Amen. Every day. And thank him for just giving me food to eat, clothes to wear, and a roof over my head. God, I praise you that you are Jehovah Rohi, the Lord my shepherd, I shall not want. I go through the whole Psalm 23 every day. And, and John 10, that uh, his, I'm one of your sheep. I hear your voice. You know me. I follow you. You give eternal life to me. I'll never perish. No one will snatch me out of your hand. And then I praise him that he's Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals me. I'm on the lowest dose of medicine I've been on in 19 years. And I believe before I die, I'm going to be medicine free and symptom free. And I pray every day for a God to heal me. Amen. And you know what? He may or he may not. And if I get sick again, you know what? That's his business. I'm going to pray for healing and leave it with God. I don't understand all of that. I don't, I don't even try anymore. I just rest and trust. But I believe he's a healer. I praise him. He's Jehovah Shalom, the Lord my peace. He gives me peace that passes all understanding. I praise him that he's Jehovah Shammah, the Lord who is present. I just thank God that he's with us, that he's not way off somewhere out there. And then I get to the greatest name of all, the greatest tower of all. Oh, just to speak his name, to say Jesus. Oh, I praise you, Jesus. How can you not run to that tower? In the book of Acts, they ran to that tower. Peter said, it's the name above all names. We will baptize in that name, Acts 2.38. Peter spoke in that name to a lame man, and he walked in the name of Jesus, Acts 3.6. The apostles rejoiced that they were able to suffer for the name of Jesus, Acts 5.41. And when the apostle Paul got ready to cast out a demon out of a woman that had a real bad demon in her. He appropriated the name of Jesus, Acts 16, 18. She continued doing this for many days. She was shouting and interrupting the sermon. But Paul was greatly annoyed and turned and said to the spirit, he didn't talk to the woman, he talked to the demon, I command you, look at this now, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And that demon had no option. And it, it came out at that very moment. The early Christians understood that there was power and authority when they appropriated the sovereign name of Jesus. And you and I need to do the same thing. We need to pray the name of Jesus over our children, over our country, over our city, over our situations, over our job, over our schools, over everything around us, over the situations in our life. Everything that is happening to you, Pray the name of Jesus over it. Ask God to move in the name of Jesus. When you pray in the name of Jesus, you bring the Son of God, the very living Son of God who defeated hell and death and the grave and is raised from the dead and is at the most powerful place in the universe. He's at the right hand of God interceding for you. And when you plead the name of Jesus, you get that one, God's Son, on your side. And listen to me, there's no better person to have on your side. I got more to say, but I got to get going. The authority of my protection. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The appropriation of my protection. The righteous runs into it. I've got, I can't just sit around. I, I got to run to it. I've got to appropriate it. I've got to, I've got to call on the name of Jesus. But then one little phrase at the end does it all for me. And that is the assurance of your protection. We've already looked at the name of the Lord as a strong tower. We've already looked at the righteous runs into it. But read those last three words with me. Would you put that on the screen? Just start with and. Here we go. And is safe. Let's put instead of is, let's put I'm. And I'm safe. Say it with me. 
and I'm saved. Do I know what's going to happen five seconds from now? I don't know. A great preacher here in Memphis, Ralph White, died doing a, during a funeral the other day. I could die before this sermon's over with. We don't know what's going to happen. You don't, you don't, you don't have, look, you don't have five seconds promised to you. But as long as I live, I'm going to pray for the protection of the Lord through the name of Jesus and I believe I will be safer if I do that than if I don't do that. Amen. Calling on the name of the Lord. He is safe. But what about those who are martyred? I understand, but you know what? <clears throat> God sees the big picture. God knows the future as well as He knows the past, as well as He knows the present. And I don't believe one drop of any martyr's blood has ever been wasted. I believe what Tertullian said, the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And when God allows somebody to be martyred for their, for their faith, or to be imprisoned for their faith, or to be tortured for their faith. You look at me, I believe somehow God uses that just like He used the suffering of Jesus for redemption. He used Paul's suffering for redemptive acts, and He will use others. I don't understand all that, but I know this, God is good. We messed up the world. He didn't mess up the world. Our sin messed up the world. And whatever is wrong with this world, look at mankind. Whatever is right with this world, look at God. And God is moving it. Listen now, about to be through. God is moving this whole thing toward His desired end. Everything that happens is not His will. I don't believe in I, these people say, well, there's various kinds of wills. Show me that in the Bible. Look at me. It's either God's will or it's not. Don't give me this mumbo jumbo about this is this kind of will and that's that kind of will and that kind of, you know, come on. It is not the will of God that babies be aborted. It is not the will of God for two men to be together intimately. It is not the will of God for all these other things that we could talk about. It's just not. So don't tell me God caused that. Well, He allowed it. He allows a lot of things because He gives us a limited amount of free choice, as free as you can be with a sinful nature, all right? So what I'm saying is this, when you pray, you will be saved. Now, you've got to counterbalance that. You can't live in some fantasy world and say, well, okay, that means that Job had some sin in his life. I don't believe that. He was the most righteous man on the earth. And sometimes God lets that happen. He just does. In fact, Jesus promised in John 16, 32, this is the night before he died, right before he went to the cross. He said, these things I have spoken to you so that in me you may have peace. You know what you think you're going to have peace in? If I can have enough money to retire, I'll be at peace. If I can just get all my children acting like I want them to act, good luck on that. I'll be at peace. If I can just get my spouse to act right, I'll be at peace. If I can get all those crazy people I work with to act right, if I can just get everybody in Memphis to act right, look at me. Your peace is not determined by anybody else but you and the Lord. You can be in the worst circumstances. You can be in a horrible circumstances, look away on the outside and be at perfect peace. Peter, I love it. He's arrested. Acts 12. He goes to jail. He said, hey, I'm going to get martyred. Now, we don't hear the words. He knows he's going to get killed the next day. He said, i got to get a good night's sleep. When the angel came for him, he was sawing logs. Don't you love that? Don't you love, here's a man about to be killed. I mean, look, this guy's serious. He just killed James. He'll kill you, Peter. You're a, you're a bigger target. Peter said, yeah, I don't know what God has for me. Good night. 
Sleep tight. Don't let the swords bite. <laughs> Amen. He wakes up in the middle of the night and God protects him. I don't understand that. But I know this. I can trust in the big plan of God. All I know is this. The devil ain't going to win. The Lord's going to win. Amen. He's already won. He's already won. And I'm going to pray for protection. And I believe that God puts his sovereign hands around me. And if he allows something to come into my life, as long as I'm walking obediently with the Lord, I'm not talking about sinless, but I'm talking about wanting to be obedient with the Lord. I believe that nothing can come into my life unless it comes through the sovereign hands of an almighty God. Do you believe that? The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. Well, stand with me, please. I want to read three verses. I pray these verses every day. They got the screens way over here. I got to come over here to look at it. <clears throat> this is from the New Living Translation. Would you read this with me and pray it as you read it? I cry out to the Lord. I plead for the Lord's mercy. Then I pray to you, O Lord. I say, You are my place of refuge. You're all I really want in life. Hear my cry, for I am very low. Rescue me from my persecutors, for they are too strong for me. Bring me out of prison so I can thank you. The godly will crowd around me, for you are good to me. How many of you know that God is good to you? Amen? All right, let's, let's pray this now. Here we go. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman keeps awake in vain. Now, I don't pray that verse every day. I, I, that other one I do. I want to ask you, what are you trusting in? You trusting in a seatbelt? I think you should wear your seatbelt, but if, is that all the protection you got? As crazy as people drive nowadays, that's all you got? Well, I'm trusting in Smith & Wesson. That's all you got? They may have a bigger Smith & Wesson than you do. Well, I'm trusting in my deadbolts. That's all you got? That's all you got? I've got an alarm system. Yeah, they'll be quick to get over there too, really, won't they? All right, yeah. That thing goes off. I don't know how many times we've set ours off. I don't hear from them. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> now, if you're that person, I'm not mad at you. But I ain't trusting in that, I'll tell you that. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman keeps awake in vain. It's the Lord you'd better trust in. You can lock your doors. Don't, I'm not saying I do all that, but ultimately I trust in the Lord. Now you can go to that other verse. Thank you. All right, here we go. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. They collapse and fall, but we rise and stand upright. Let's thank God that he's our protection today. Can we do that? Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you for being so good to us. I thank you for this wonderful day. We have sensed your presence in this room. And Lord God, I thank you for just allowing me the privilege to get to preach to these precious people. Lord, I thank you that your name is a strong tower. Let's say the name of Jesus together. Say it with me, please. Jesus. Lord, that's our strong tower. We run to it and we are safe in the tower, the strong tower of the name of the Lord. Thank you so much for watching this presentation from Bellevue Baptist Church. And you know, we want to be just like the Apostle Paul when he said in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, I do all things for the sake of the gospel. The gospel is the good news of Jesus. That good news is just as important today as it was in the first century. And here's that good news. God loves you. He created you. He loves you with an everlasting love. But the same Bible that teaches that God loves all of us also says that we all have a problem, a spiritual problem called sin. We have all broken the laws of God. And the wages or the penalty of that sin is death, which means we're spiritually separated 
from God. But God refused to leave us separated from himself. So he sent his son, Jesus Christ, the eternal divine son of God. He came to this earth through the womb of a virgin. He had no sin when he was born because he was born of a virgin. And he never sinned even though he was tempted just like we are. And the Bible says even though he was the sinless son of God, he went to a cross to die an atoning sacrificial death. He died in your place and in mine. He paid not for his sins, but for your sins and mine. He had no sins. And then the Bible says he was buried because he really did die. And then he rose from the dead bodily, victoriously, and eternally. And now he offers you, he offers everyone the gift of eternal life. How do you receive it? First of all, you have to repent. You have to turn from your sins and turn to Jesus. And then the Bible says you have to believe. You have to believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins and that he rose from the dead to give you eternal life. And then you have to receive. You have to invite him to come into your life, to accept him as your Lord and Savior. And the moment you do that, you become a child of God. Would you like to repent and believe and receive right now? If you would, I'd love to lead you in a prayer of commitment to do just that. Would you just bow with me and give your heart to Jesus right now? Say something like this, Dear Lord Jesus, thank you that you love me. I am a sinner. I can't save myself. You're the only Savior. I repent of my sin. I turn to you. I believe you died on the cross for me. I believe you rose from the dead. I receive you right now. Come into my life. Save me right now, Lord Jesus. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Friend, if you prayed that and you were sincere, if you really repented and believed and received Christ, you're a Christian. God bless you and thank you for watching this broadcast.